a look at the tabs. I freaking love them so much. I'm trash for her. <laughs> Literally shattered my heart. Hi, welcome to another video. My name's Jodie and today I'm going to be telling you guys all about my top 10 books of 2020. So it's very, very hard to put together this list because there are a lot of good books I read in 2020, but a lot of them weren't really stand out like loves for me, if that makes sense. Like for me, my top books are always ones that I could happily reread over and over again and never get bored of. Some of these I probably wouldn't reread, but I did absolutely adore and just want to talk about them. So yes, we are going to do that. I've never done one of these videos before, so I'm quite excited. And it'll be nice for future me to look back and see what my favourite books of each year was. So I'm hoping I'm going to do this every single year and it'll become like a little tradition. But I've seen a lot of these videos going about and I just thought it would be fun to make one. I do have 10 books here to talk to you guys about and I might do some like honourable mentions at the end of ones that didn't quite make the list, but that I really, really loved. Really, really hard because I read a lot of manga and graphic novels in 2020, so this could have been just filled with them so I've tried to really narrow it down so I have only one graphic novel in this pile as well but I definitely want to talk about it so I'm going to do this in no particular order we're just going to grab a book and go with it don't remember an awful lot about some of these which is really bad considering they're my top 10 of 2020 but we're just going to roll with it and hope that my brain remembers something so firstly we have a book that literally shattered my heart ripped it out tore it up and threw it away because this literally had me in tears by the end and it was just such a beautiful book but the book I'm talking about is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller so this was the first Madeline Miller book that I ever read and I immediately fell in love with her writing her writing is absolutely beautiful she just has such a poetic and lyrical way of writing and it is just absolutely stunning and I just like I said fell in love with her writing completely can we just talk about how beautiful this cover is for a second because I'm in love with it I love it so much um, but yes I absolutely adored this book this book follows Patroclus and Achilles and you follow them from a young age Patroclus gets exiled from his kingdom and he gets sent off to live with Achilles and obviously like Achilles is like the shining boy like he's you know prophesied about to become like this big legend and all this stuff and Patrick Collins at first is a little bit jealous of him and so he goes to his kingdom with us loads of the boys and a friendship develops between him and Achilles and we follow them from a young age growing up together learning to fight things like this and things go from friendship to a lot more serious and a lot more romantic and we see them grow up into young men becoming warriors and then they go off to fight the battle against Troy and this is where the kind of prophecy of Achilles becoming this ultimate warrior comes in and Patroclus is dealing with some stuff and lots of different things happen during this war and you really do see so much character development throughout this book like it is insane and it was just such a lovely like really powerful book like it really did pull on your heartstrings and i just absolutely fell in love with the characters the writing this isn't a really nice you know lovey dovey kind of book we do have some really dark and sinister themes in here and the parts of mythology and history that madeline miller chose to include in this book weren't always the good parts some of them are really brutal and really dark and i just enjoyed everything about this book like this book was just stunning and one of my favorite books for sure and i'm really really glad that i read this because this did come out a few years ago and i just never bothered to pick it up and I'm just still really happy that I did because it really did give me a good introduction to the world of like retellings when it comes to mythology and kind of like ancient Greece and all those kinds of things which I've now found that I really really love and enjoy. So yeah this is definitely one of my top reads of 2020. Just an absolutely stunning book written just amazingly and just amazing characters, history, everything. Yeah, I just love this. Then next we have The Poet X by, by Elizabeth Acevedo and I absolutely adored this book. I think I read this for a 24 hour readathon, I believe. And this was just such a wonderful book. It's the first book I've ever read that's written in verse like this. So it was just like a really interesting read because like I said, not reading anything in that format before, it was like a really fun read for me and it's definitely made me want to read a lot more books that are in verse. But I also really enjoyed the themes in here and the representation. So in this book we follow Siomara and I think I was pronouncing her name wrong in that vlog. I really didn't know how to pronounce it very well, which my bad. But yeah, this book we follow Siomara and she is dealing with a lot of different things. 
and we see her kind of go through a lot of changes and kind of finding her voice and her passions and kind of breaking out of the mould that she's always put in and just overcoming a lot of different things and it really did touch on some really important themes in here as well which I really really enjoyed. I love the way that the writer explored them and the everything about this character as well. I just really really enjoyed the story and I felt like it was a really powerful read and I definitely fell in love with this writer's work as well like I immediately picked up her next book I am yet to read it but I do plan to this year I just absolutely loved this and this was the perfect introduction for me um, for books written in verse and I definitely definitely fell in love with them and I'm so excited to read this author's other book Clap When You Land I'm sure you guys are probably already familiar with it but yeah I just absolutely adored this book it was just so good and I highly highly recommend this because this is just such a good read. Then next we have a book that's probably in a lot of people's 2020 top books videos because this is an extremely hyped book. This is literally talked about everywhere and I just I don't think I've seen this much hype for a book in a long time. I totally get it. I absolutely love this book. I was pleasantly surprised by it and haven't been so immersed in a book like this for a long time and it was just absolutely incredible like yeah the hype is justified with this one but the book I'm talking about is Victoria Schwab's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I guess you guys probably could have guessed this is going to be on here it's on everyone's list pretty much. I was really really surprised by this book I really didn't know how I was going to feel about it going in I just wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into and how the story was going to play out and I didn't know a ton about this book going into it so I think that definitely was the main thing for me enjoying this. I feel like if I'd known more about it I probably wouldn't have had the same reading experience. But yeah I did tab and annotate this book and as you can see by my tabs there are a lot so you know that I love this. But I've spoken about this a lot and I've spoken about this in my December wrap up. I gave a bit more of an in-depth review. I'll have that link down below. But I absolutely adored this book. Victoria Schwab has a way of writing that really pulls you in and makes you forget that you even exist and that this is the only thing that exists. You literally just totally get immersed into this book and I just absolutely adored it. The characters in here are amazing. We have two characters. We have Henry and we have Addie and I loved how a lot of different elements of their personalities were featured and I also especially loved the mental health rep in here. The way that Victoria Schwab explored mental health and how people deal with certain things through these two characters I just thought was amazing and I absolutely love that element. I could really relate to Henry in particular and I just really really like that. I love the kind of complex kind of romances that were in here and complex narratives and Addie's character development. I really liked her as a character and this was just a book that really did take you on a journey. You know, one minute you were like smiling and hopeful for Addie, the next minute you were in despair and you were heartbroken for her. This was a really, really, really tough journey and yeah, I just absolutely adored this. It was so good. My only critique I did have with this book was the pacing, but besides the pacing, every element of this book was perfect. I just absolutely loved it. It evoked so many different emotions from me and yeah I just fall in love with Victoria Schwab's writing and I'm definitely planning to read more of her books in 2021 because this was her first adult book that I read and because of how much of an impact it had on me and how much I love this I definitely want to explore some more of her books. Definitely worth the hype like I totally get it. So next up we have a book that I absolutely adored and I remember when I was reading it I was just laughing out loud. It was just such a good book and I was like oh my god I haven't been this into a book for a long time and I loved it but now I can't remember a lot of the story which is really bad but yeah we're going to include it anyway and I do plan to reread this because I have the sequel now um, but the book that I'm talking about is Serpent and Dove by Shell Gloomy Horan so I'm sure you guys are probably really really familiar with this book again another one that was definitely hyped within the book community and again in my opinion rightly so I thoroughly enjoyed this book I really wasn't sure about it at first but I just yeah I totally love this this was such a good read I absolutely adored the main character she is so funny and for me I really really struggle to find main characters funny in books I don't know why I just think it's very hard to write that kind of humor and I just feel like the author did a perfect job of me really really falling for this character finding her very very funny and just yeah, I just absolutely adore the main character. But I really loved the enemies to lovers romance in here. That was so well done. It had all those little tropes in YA that we all love. And I'm totally a sucker for those cheesy YA tropes. And 
I was just so here for it, everything, yeah, loved it. <laughs> And I also really love the element of like the witchiness, if that makes sense, because our main character is a witch and she basically is entangled with a witch hunter. He doesn't really know she's a witch. It's one of those tropes where they have to have like a marriage to like try and solve something. I can't remember what it was exactly, but they basically have to get married and it's like not romantic at all. And then they actually do kind of start to develop feelings for each other and yeah, it's just so good. I absolutely adored it. This is just absolutely amazing. It is that typical YA book that is just very cliche but very amazing at the same time and I absolutely love this and I can't wait to reread it because like I said, there are elements of the story that I can't remember and I don't know why but I really want to revisit this. I think it's probably because I binged it in like 24 hours and maybe I was just reading it a bit too quick but I'm definitely going to reread this and I'm very excited to reread it as well and go on to the sequel but I'm not even going to go into what this was about because I'm pretty sure with this book and most of the books in this video you guys will be familiar with because I'm not going to lie they're all really really popular typical YA books to be honest um, but yeah I just really really love this book and yeah I can't wait to reread it. <laughs> so talking about really really cheesy romance and just yeah all together cliche cheesiness we have a discovery of witches by deborah harkness so this is one that again i tabbed a lot and i absolutely love this book i was a big fan of the tv show and i finally decided to pick up the book and i absolutely love this this was so good i just really really loved diana's character i love the fact that she's a scholar in oxford and that she's into alchemy and stuff like that and she's a witch I absolutely love anything to do with witches and alchemy and things like that so obviously I was going to love this main character. I really really love the kind of romance aspects of this, the magic, the fact that she is like this extremely powerful being and that she's like discovering herself and her powers and going on this journey of self-discovery like I love that and I just loved everything about this story it was just so good and there was so many like twists and turns and like hardships and like good character development and I just absolutely adored it. I don't think I need to tell you guys what this book is about because I think a lot of you guys have heard me talk about this in my videos and you're probably familiar with either the TV show or the series because it has been out for quite some time now. But yeah I absolutely adored this. The romance is very insta love like it happens like that like very very cliche, very cringy, very doesn't really make sense but at the same time like kind of does within the context of it. But because I've seen the show and because I kind of love the characters, I could kind of see past that cliche and I just really, really enjoyed this. Like it was one of the best books that I read and yeah, I knew I was going to love it because I love the show, but yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this because I feel like everyone kind of knows how much I love this book. But I'm glad that I finally read it because I've been meaning to for a while. I like this cover too, but I ripped it. Like this is very, very battered because of how much like look at the tabs like just look, just look at the tabs there's so many um i did do this for like a the real time read along so i read this in real time as in like the dates that things happen in this book would be the date that i read the chapter on if that makes sense which was really really fun as well but i definitely do want to reread this sometime but yes so glad that I read this. <laughs> so then next we have the only graphic novel that is on this list and I could have added so many graphic novels to this and I've just decided not to. I decided I wouldn't have any but I just couldn't not include this and I'm gonna have to include the other two that accompany it even though they're not officially being counted within this list but I just want to talk about all three real quick because I freaking love them so much. So that is the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. So I read this for the first time in 2020 and immediately fell in love. I read the first volume and then immediately went and picked up the second and the third and I binged them and yeah, it's been love ever since. <laughs> this is just such a wonderful series and graphic novel series. The art style in here for one is just stunning. Like I just absolutely all this like it's just so good then we have the characters themselves they are so lovable just so lovely and relatable and i just absolutely adore them and then we have the romance in here this is one of the cutest light and fluffy heartwarming romances i've ever read in my entire life and i adore it we basically follow nick and charlie who are high school teenagers and one of them is openly gay because they basically got forced into being outed which was really horrible and traumatic to read about and then we also have Nick who's like this football player, Mr Popular and he doesn't really know 
his sexuality and it isn't until he meets Charlie that he starts to question whether or not he's maybe bisexual, is he gay, is he straight, he's not sure. So we have a lot about him kind of discovering his sexuality and then his relationship with Charlie developing from a friendship to something more. And yeah, the developing romance between the two characters is just so lovely, like I adore it. One of my favorite things about this series is the British humor. Most of the time when I read romance or contemporaries, especially YA, it's always set in America or like just never really seems to encapsulate my experience in high school in the UK and certain things that get said in here and like just things that happen are just so British and I love that because it really represented a lot of things that happened for me in high school and the kind of British humour, the way we talk, the way we act, the way things are in the UK. Like I just really love that aspect of this book as well and yeah I just absolutely fell in love with this series. So excited for the fourth volume. I'm definitely going to reread these soon because I just adored them. One of the most amazing series and making me feel so unbelievably happy and just so like warm and fuzzy like honestly they, these are just amazing if you're debating picking them up do it because you will not regret it honestly one of the most beautiful series ever with some of the most amazing characters and i love them <laughs> feel really bad because all the books i'm talking about are really really like kind of popular really well-known books but i just tended to read them more than anything in 2020 really love these books so yeah but they are really, really popular, well-known books, so I don't think I really need to continue giving any synopses or anything like that. But this book here, I'm sure you've all seen a lot. Um, this is How the King of Elf Fame Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love this book. I read the first book when it first came out, and I didn't really like it that much. I didn't see the hype, but I read it right after I'd read Akatar, and I think my expectations way too high and I thought it was going to be something that it wasn't so I didn't really enjoy it and then in 2020 I was like I want to reread this series I really want to finish the series and read the second and third book I'm going to reread it and I reread it immediately read the second book I love that as well and then the third book for the first time and I just fell in love with all three I totally understand the hype now and gave them all five stars like they were so good and so fun to read actually no I gave Queen of Nothing four stars because it just wasn't quite as good as the first so I decided to change my rating I totally fell in love with the series and then this book came out and I just loved it so much this is just such a fun book it's not like anything kind of life-changing or anything like that it's just purely fun like an entertainment like I just really really love this I read it in one sitting it's just loads of short stories from Cardin's perspective which is one of the things I love the most was seeing things from Cardin's perspective and it's so like humorous and just cute and I don't know like it was just a book that gave me a lot of happiness when I read it and for that reason it was one of my top books of the year like just absolutely adored it and I'm sure if you guys like that series and read this as well you can understand why I loved it so much. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought we were getting like a Jude card and romantic kind of book or, or like kind of everything from his perspective. That's not what this is. This is just kind of a little bit of a side thing. It does include some Jude stuff but not a lot but I still adored it. It just made me really happy and that's why it's in my list because I loved it and I'd happily reread this over and over again. So yeah I just had to include this one. <laughs> then next we had one that I read for Vampathon and I was pleasantly surprised by this book and that is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. So you all know I love that kind of gothic, dark academia vibey kind of writing style and this definitely had those gothic vibes for me. I love this book so much. Um, I did have this one as well and this really had this kind of gothic vampy vibes. I just love, like I loved the writing. I absolutely adored it. It was so dark and the way things were described, everything was so descriptive and like eerie and I just I don't know like I can't really explain what I mean this just had such good writing like I could envision myself being in this setting the way like smells were described and places were described and lighting was described and sounds everything like the way this was described was so picturesque and I could really envision myself in the character shoes and it's not often that a book can make you feel that way and make you feel yourself as the main character like I felt her anguish I felt her despair I felt her hope like I felt everything and I absolutely adored that and I loved how this book includes vampires but isn't about vampires like vampires aren't the main characters they just exist as part of the plot and that was something I really liked I love vampires and I love things like that but sometimes I do feel like the vampire narrative can get a bit tiresome or 
it can kind of take over too much of the story and too much of the characters' personalities. So I like that vampires weren't the main focus in here and that the main characters aren't vampires. Like, that was an element I personally really loved. I just fell in love with this. This was a gorgeous gothic book and I was just totally here for it. Then next we have another really popular YA book. Well, this is technically fantasy, but it's been very, very popular within YA. So that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I read this towards the end of 2020 and I absolutely loved it. It wasn't a five star read though, but I still want to include it in this list because I did absolutely love it. The reason it wasn't five stars for me is just because I didn't really understand the ending, but I don't think that's a reflection of the author or her writing. I just think that was me. So yeah, I love this. I absolutely adore Wrath. I love the world. I love Carrie Maniscalco's writing. Like, yeah, she has such a good way at writing characters. She's a good page turner. Like she makes you want to turn the page and keep going. And I just really, really enjoyed this. I've been wanting a dark romance with like a prince of hell or a devil and someone. Like I really, really wanted that. And it was something I didn't necessarily get from Adi LaRue. And I read this after Adi LaRue. And this is kind of what this is, you know, we've got a prince of hell and a witch and them kind of getting a little bit romancy. So I was just here for it. I was obviously going to love this because it's a witch and a devil and it's dark and it's Carrie Maniscalco. So yeah, absolutely love this. We have Prince Wrath who is absolutely stunning. Like I absolutely love him so much. And the main character, Amelia, basically her twin sister is murdered and her and Wrath kind of get stuck together investigating the murder of her sister and these other witches and trying to figure out exactly what happened. So we have like a murder mystery kind of thing in here. We've also got a bit of like enemies to the lovers and a lot of different themes that I just really, really enjoyed. And I just absolutely love this. Like it was mostly the romance for me and Wrath, but I'm very, very excited for the second book. And I just had to include this because of how fun this book was. Like, yeah, I absolutely love this. And again, another one I totally understand the hype about. <laughs> and then I saved the best to last. It is no surprise that this book is going to be in this list and it's no surprise that this author is on this list. We all know she's my fave and I would read anything and everything by this author and I'm trash for her. But the book that I am talking about is Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. So surprise, <laughs> we all knew this would be on here. I absolutely adored this. Favourite book of 2020, easy. Like I absolutely love this so much. This just, I don't even know how to put this into words. I read this book before it got released. I was lucky enough to receive an arc. And when I saw the size of it, I was like, oh gosh, that is gonna take a long time for me to get through. I am a slow reader. And I was a bit worried because it was a first adult book. It was kind of a mesh of, well, it was urban fantasy, which is very hit and miss for me. It was a lot more of a complex fantasy novel. You know, we had a lot more world building going on in here, a lot more characters and those kind of things I can find a little bit difficult to wrap my head around sometimes. So I was a bit worried initially going into this, like, am I actually gonna love this as much as I love her other books? Am I gonna like her writing? Because obviously I expect it to be different. I'm so glad that I love this book. This book absolutely blew me away. Like I did a reading vlog for this book and I did a review, like a non-spoilery one. I'll have that linked down below because you can see all my reactions to some very nice and um, smutty scenes and also just get like a proper review, which I did at the end. So like I said, I'll link that down below. I absolutely love this. This was so good. This literally like had me laughing. It had me crying. It kind of ticked like every single box for me and every single emotion was felt when I read this book. It just literally ruined me and I don't think I've ever cried so much at a book. Like I cried more at this book than I did Marley and Me and I read Marley and Me when I was like nine and a dog lover so you can imagine how that went. I cried more at this so that's how invested in these characters and this story that I was. There's just so many good aspects to this book. You've kind of got that murder mystery element because someone very close to the main character is murdered at the start of the book and as a result of this we have the main character Bryce dealing with a lot of like pain and anguish and despair and grief so I felt like the way that Sarah J Maas wrote those emotions and those feelings was really really well done she really did go into different aspects of grief there is um, trigger warnings in here for drug abuse as well 
we do have that in here but I just found that element was really really well written and then we also have like some really really good character development we have a lot of like mystery in this book in terms of the main character herself there's quite clearly something that we're not being told that we find out quite soon into the book about the main character so we're also like unraveling layers of the main character as we read this book and like putting all the little breadcrumbs back together again and it was just it was so good like I love that and then we have the friendship between the main character and someone was just literally like so heartwarming but also so devastating and heartbreaking at the same time and yeah by the end of the book oh my god my heart was just ruined and yeah I just I absolutely love that strong female friendship was just amazing and then we have the romance and we have Hunt. Sarah J Maas just knows how to write her love interests in here because again I was in love with this guy. Such a cool character and I just love the romance, I love the smut, I loved everything like that's what I love m most in here was the fact there was a lot more smutty because it's adult like it wasn't as smutty as it could have been like definitely it needed more smut. <laughs> yeah like I just I love this so much and I'm struggling to find words but I am going to reread this soon because I absolutely fell in love with it and I can't wait to read it and have my heart broken again but there were so many good quotes in here and just it's just so good this is like the perfect fantasy book because of all the different things it has in here the romance the meta mystery the really badass protagonist with really really good powers the friendships in here the world building, the political system, the magical system, the creatures that are in here, everything. Like, this ticked all the boxes for a good fantasy for me and I just absolutely loved it and I cannot recommend this book enough. Like, I've recommended this book to a few people in work and, like, customers have come back and told me they absolutely loved it and that has just absolutely made my entire life. Like, yeah, I love that. So it's definitely worth the read and even if you're someone who's maybe read Sarah J Maas and you don't like her YA stuff and things like that, I'd still recommend reading this because this is very very different in my opinion to her YA stuff. I feel like her writing really progressed and she kind of does take the mick out of some of her YA tropey stuff which I loved. Like I love the fact she was kind of taking the mick out of her own writing from those books as well. Like it was just so good. And like I said the world building in here was amazing. One thing I will say if you do decide to pick this book up, bear with it in the first few chapters. It is very like a big information dump, you know. The world is being set up, you're getting introduced to all these different things, different characters, different places, magical systems, politics, all of that kind of stuff. But once you kind of get into that, that's it then. This book is just amazing. Really, don't be put off by the size like I was because I thought, oh my god, this book's going to be too long. It wasn't long enough, like, to put it bluntly, it just was not long enough. And yeah, best book of 2020. Absolutely amazing. Loved it so much. And you will need to go and read this book. <laughs> so that does conclude my top books of 2020. I know a lot of them were really obvious, popular YA kind of books. I know that, but I am a sucker for those type of books. And these are just the ones that I really, really loved and got me through the lockdown and 2020 generally, and brought me a lot of happiness and just really like had me glued to for like a good while like yeah I just absolutely love them so that's that <laughs> if you have read any of these books yourself please do let me know your thoughts in the comments I'd be really really interested to know how you felt about them because I know not everyone loves these kind of books either and I know some of them people probably hated so I'm always interested to hear other people's opinions and to see maybe why you didn't like it or why you did love it I just think it's really interesting and it's fun to talk about in the comments I do just want to mention another graphic novel because I didn't include this but this is definitely an honourable mention and that is Snot Girl I read all three volumes of this this is easily one of my all-time favourite graphic novels probably ever so so good so weird so unpredictable full of all different stuff and yeah, I'm not even going to go into what this is about because it's so weird, but this is just top tier graphic novel. Like, I love this so much. I just wanted to quickly mention that because I did love it and it's worth mentioning. But yes, those are all my top books of 2020. Please do let me know in the comments what your favourite books of 2020 were. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up and comment your thoughts on some of these books down below. For those of you who might not have watched my videos before, I make bookish videos at least twice a week and I host live shows and reading sprints every Saturday throughout the lockdown. So it'd be really nice if you wanted to join me here on my channel and just get bookish and have some fun basically. <laughs> but yeah, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!